But Peter puts all this into perspective for us to see where our suffering really lies. And he helps us to see suffering is under the hand of God. Peter says, Therefore, humble yourselves under God's powerful hand, so he may lift you up at the appointed time. This message comes from Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Payson, Arizona. Reaching out with rock solid hope in Rim Country. February 7th, 2021. 1 Peter 5, 6-11 I hear the Savior calling The gospel comes to me You know, out of all the believers and all the disciples who followed Jesus, Peter seems to be the one who had the biggest problem with suffering. We see Peter dealing with suffering in a way that he really shows he's afraid and doesn't understand it. Peter doesn't get suffering when it comes to following Christ. We see Jesus telling Peter about the coming sufferings that Jesus was going to face and how the Messiah had to suffer and die. And Peter will have nothing of it. Peter rebukes Jesus. Peter says, this will never happen to you. And then when Peter does see Jesus suffering, Peter himself has to disown and disavow any connection to Jesus. Why? Because he doesn't want to suffer too. When it came to God's plan and suffering, it's clear that Peter didn't get it. He didn't understand either how to deal with suffering or why suffering was there when it came to those who follow Christ. Fellow servants of Christ who have been called, do you get it? When suffering comes into your life, it can be hard to understand, hard to deal with and to manage. But what we see is, later on, Peter got it. Peter understood suffering as he writes his letter years later to the scattered believers. And we see this morning, as we look at Peter's letter and the closing portion of his letter, we see him writing once again regarding suffering. But this time he counsels us and instructs us on suffering. So this morning, I invite you to join me as we look at these words and we see how the servant of Christ is called to endure suffering. Now, there are obviously a lot of different ways people suffer in this world. We've seen some of the unique ways people have suffered in the course of a pandemic by facing loneliness. That in and of itself is suffering, not to mention those who become sick or ill or those who perhaps die from it and the loss that is faced by those left behind. Suffering is found also in people that have had fi financial hardships or those who have lost positions or faced employment difficulties. We've seen that. And we've also seen many other types of suffering in our life or the lives of others. Suffering regarding illness or cancer. As we see a person deal with that struggle for years and years under that weight of that affliction. Other chronic illnesses suffer, cause people to suffer and afflict them in many ways. Of course, we, we can't forget one of the greatest causes of suffering in this world, which afflicts everybody. And that's the feeling of pain and loss from death. And I don't think it makes any difference whether that death was long expected or it came from some sudden and tragic accident. Death causes suffering and pain and loss and it's hard for everyone to deal with. If you've experienced a loss, you've felt this. And if you haven't, then brace yourself. It will bring grief and suffering and pain. And on top of all this, we see how Christians are called to suffer as they follow Christ. Peter addresses the various kinds of suffering in his letter. And included among them is what Christians must especially face, which is the hardships that they face for following Jesus. As disciples of Jesus, we can expect, along with all the other sufferings and all the other pains, to face persecution from the wicked world who seeks to destroy Christ and from the attacks of the devil. This persecution is maybe not so bad for us in a, a nation that's offering Christian freedom and religious liberty. Maybe today in our nation, someone might, as we see in some circumstances, lose their job or lose some important position because they've expressed their faith on social media. 
But consider the believers who are suffering throughout the world. In the time of Peter, we saw he writes to those scattered believers who are enduring trials of many kinds, including bodily persecution for the faith. We still see that today. There are believers, for example, like one who is named Mary Muhammadi, living in Iran. She was arrested in 2020 and given 10 lashes. Why? Because she was disturbing the peace as a Christian. And actually only about two weeks ago she was arrested again. And this time it was because her headdress that she was required to wear in Iran wasn't adjusted properly. Suffering and persecuted because she follows Christ. And consider all the Christians today, for example, in Nepal, who are suffering because they live in a predominantly Hindu nation that persecutes them and makes life very difficult if they follow Christ. Or in Chiapas, Mexico, we see how many evangelical believers are forced out of their town because they follow Christ. And they are driven from their town and exiled and unallowed to return as their homes are looted and ruined. And recently they tried to build a church, but were not allowed. Lots of suffering comes, including the suffering for being a follower of Christ. And when you look at all this, you could say there's pain that comes at the hand of some virus or pain that comes at the hand of some attacking cancer and the source within us, destroying us. And we could say there's hurt from broken family relationships and persecution from people who seek to harm and destroy. And there's pain from a loss as someone dies. And that sting of death makes us suffer. But Peter puts all this into perspective for us to see where our suffering really lies. And he helps us to see suffering is under the hand of God. Peter says, Therefore, humble yourselves under God's powerful hand, so he may lift you up at the appointed time. That is to say, our suffering is not at the hand merely of our enemies or at the hand of some virus or at the hand of some other external influence. Our suffering, our, our hardship comes under the hand of our God. He is ultimately the one in control, and he is the one who has authority over our lives. And that should be comforting, that it is under the hand of our God, not some other mere external force, but under his hand through which we suffer, even if it involves persecution. And Peter says, humble yourselves. It's awfully hard for us to, to lower ourselves and to submit, to yield to things like pain, hardship, loss, illness, death, persecution. But Peter says to Christian believers, focus your mindset and change your whole mindset around as you view suffering as something you place yourself, lowly and humbly place yourself under the hand of your God. And if our suffering is under the hand of him who holds all things under his control, Peter says, so that he may lift you up at the appointed time. The same God who holds authority over all things and sends and permits these sufferings in our lives, is able to remove them and able to lift us up out of the pain and the suffering which we face. Je Jesus, the Lord, our God, rules over all things with all authority. He is the one who led his Christians to see suffering. And now he has taught Peter, who teaches us through the Spirit, to humble ourselves when suffering comes our way. And when we face that suffering, Peter says, cast your anxiety on him, him who holds that powerful hand and rules over all things, is not just disinterested or malevolently sending pain our way. He cares about you. When you face that suffering, he is a God who does care for you. And so you can, in suffering, turn to him Turn to the one who is over all things, your God, knowing that in that pain, it's not because of some trial or hardship in which God is enacting punishment from you. And I've heard that before many times. In fact, I've heard it recently from someone who is suffering a great deal. 
as they described for me all the pains that were coming into their life, pain after pain. And then they said, is God angry at me? Is God causing this because he's punishing me for something wrong that I've done? Peter gives us a resounding answer of, no, God is not punishing you. God is not enacting something on you in anger when you face suffering. He cares for you. Suffering, we may not always know why it comes, but we do know what we are to do in suffering. Peter gets it. Suffering is so that we cast all of our cares on the Lord. We see the early church gathered concerning the strife and the pain and the persecution they face, gathered in prayer, casting their cares on the Lord. When you face suffering or pain, it is an opportunity for you to take that invitation as he says, cast all your anxiety to me. Don't carry the the anxiety, the worries. Don't carry all the, the stress and everything that you have because of suffering. Put it on your Lord who cares for you. Approach his throne in prayer, the prayer of a, a caring, loving God. However, there, there is one who doesn't care for you and who does delight in the fact that you suffer and seeks to see you destroyed in that suffering. So Peter says, have sound judgment. Be alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Have you ever seen that in those nature films? The lion looks around for that straggling, maybe perhaps injured and suffering part of the herd that they're trying to attack. And the lion then sneaks up, hoping to find an opportune time to devour that which is suffering and weak. That's how the devil operates. He, in cowardly fashion, looks for the Christian when they're at their weakest moment, and that's when he strikes the hardest. And his end goal is very different from God's goal for us. His end goal is that we suffer eternally and that we be destroyed, separated from the God who cares for us. Maybe you've seen this when someone faces pain or hardship or suffering. In that suffering, they begin to turn away from God. They begin to withdraw from the God who cares for them, no longer casting their cares on him, but throwing all of their accusations or their pains at him in an angry fashion. In doing so, the the devil wins. So Peter says, have sound judgment and be alert. Don't recognize suffering as God attacking you in malevolence, but a benevolent, loving God who is there to hear your concerns as you suffer and who has never left your side. Peter says regarding the devil, resist him by being firm in the faith. Servants of the Lord, who have been called to share in glory with Christ, when suffering comes your way, you could do as Peter initially did and and rebuke it and try to run away from it and deny knowing your Lord, or casting your cares on the Lord, you can stand firm in the faith. You can join with the saints before you who have said, even if he slay me, yet I will praise him. Standing firm in the faith means knowing the God of all comfort will comfort you. Having firmness in the faith means knowing that his his powerful hand still is over all things. And being firm in the faith means knowing that God is faithful. Even as we endure sufferings in our lives, he remains faithful to his promises. And as Peter says, he will lift us up at the appointed time. Being firm in the faith means despite what we see right now and the suffering that we might face in our life right now, we stand firm in the promises of God who will with his powerful hand lift us up out of that suffering. Peter adds, you know that the same kind of sufferings are being laid on your brotherhood all over the world. Remember this as you suffer. And this is not some merely misery loves company comfort. This is God reminding us that this is his plan as it's been done throughout the church in history. The fellow suffering of the brotherhood was seen in men like Daniel in ancient times. It was seen in the early reformers of the church in the 16th century. And it's still seen today by Christians around the world like Mary Mohammedi and others as they suffer various kinds of pains. You're not alone. 
You are not being singled out as unique or being punished by God as you face these pains, but rather you are following someone like Peter who faced great suffering. And you are following all the apostles and all the martyrs of the faith and every believer as you follow Christ through suffering to glory. They stood firm in the faith and attained their goal. So Peter concludes here, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you. He is the God of all grace, the God who endured suffering in our place, the suffering that we truly deserved, which was the price for our sin. The God of all grace, for a time, humbled himself. And for that little while that Peter once didn't understand, suffered many things, was crucified, and died. But the God of all grace had come to suffer on behalf of us, to set us free, so that he might call us to share in his eternal glory. Jesus, the Son of God, yes, did suffer, but he rose to life victorious. And risen in glory, he assured his disciples that peace was theirs, so they could endure the coming attacks of the enemy, the coming pains of this life, and know about a God who cares for them so deeply, he sent his Son, and the Son of God, who brings them to bright glory. Consider this, the God of all grace has called you. He called you to faith in Jesus, called you to be his own, and he calls you to share in his eternal glory. Maybe you caught that as you read through Peter's letter here in chapter 5. After you've suffered a little while, he called you to eternal glory. That really puts suffering into perspective. The suffering we face now for a little while leads to eternal glory. And in the meantime, it leads us to cast our cares on our God, rely on him, and give glory to him even as we face suffering. And he himself, it says, will restore, establish, strengthen, and support you. May the God of all grace, as you face your various sufferings now, help you to get it. To get it like Peter got it, that when suffering comes, we cast our cares on the Lord who has a powerful hand and rules over all things, and who himself will restore us to the glory that he's called us to so that for a time we can endure these little while sufferings. To him be glory and power forever and ever, the God of all grace. Servants of Christ, you have been called, called to endure suffering. Cast your cares on him, stand firm in the faith, resist the devil, and after this little while we will share in bright glory. Amen. Oh, my precious Savior, this is my humble plea. Prepare me for my mission.